Welcome to part four of my Family Patterns video learning module series on Big Y 700 DNA tests. In this particular module, we're going to try to understand how did family tree DNA come up with our haplogroup and how did they decide that the branches in our paternal family tree, how did they determine when they split um, and who were members of those particular haplogroups. And so this is part four of the learning modules. And in the previous ones, we learned about the test, what it is, how what our ancestry is from the migration. Uh, part three, we learned about how to interpret and understand our matches. And so here, we're going to get a little bit technical but I promise not too technical, in trying to understand how these branches in your paternal family tree were, were created and how they determined how you fit into your particular branch. So in this particular module, we're going to uh, talk about the three main areas that are within your big Y results found on your landing page. We'll go into the block tree, the big Y matches, as well as the Discover Haplogroups report. So, but before we kind of jump into some of those reports, I want to introduce you to some terms that you may or may not be familiar with. Um, they're going to help me explain some of the concepts we're going to talk about here today. Uh, so, when we talk about SNP mutations, these are the Y-DNA markers that family tree DNA tests. And it's when they find that you have a chemical signature that is different for one marker than everybody else. That is what we call a mutation. And as we talked about before, those mutations are handed down from father to son. So we're able to trace those and create those uh, those branches. But when we start looking at these mutations, we're going to look at what are called named variants. These are the SNP mutations that is well known and documented in many other people's uh, Y-DNA results. We're also going to look at private variants. These are SNP mutations that are unique to you. Um, and or they are not put on the haplotree yet. So we call them private because nobody else really has those. And there is a more umbrella term we call non-matching variants, which includes all of those private variants that are unique to you, all other private variants that are unique to other members of your haplogroup, and other non-matching but named SNPs. And so we're going to talk about those and, and that's how we're going to truly really understand how these branches were created. So going into our big Y matches, you can see going across the top, there's a couple different tabs and it will, it will open up to your matching, uh, which lists all your matches. And again, I privatized them and you can see across the top, there's named variants that we've talked about. I'm not going to really go into those, but you're, you're welcome to explore those on your own. And if you cared to know what are my private variants, you could see those there. But what we will look on and concentrate on is that center column there called non-matching variants. It includes those private variances, uh, variants, but it also includes, as I mentioned before, the private variants of others that are in your haplogroup. And so that it is these items here under the non-matching variants that Family Tree DNA uses to calculate and determine which haplogroup you belong and when that time to most recent common ancestor, what that year likely was. So Let's move into the block tree. And the block tree can be overwhelming when you look at it. And again, just to kind of orient ourselves to it, you can see here 
that this is my branch here and it's labeled as such and I am tester A. And if you've watched some of my other videos, you know that I've I privatized and you'll recognize some of these letters down here. This is my haplogroup, which again, we've talked about in previous videos, IY106972. It has five members. How do I know it has five members? Because if I go straight up here and look at this white block, that is again, my haplogroup and these two genetic mutations below it are also part of our subcomponents of my haplogroup. They come along with it. In this case, here are the three that are part of this haplogroup and here are two others that are also part of the haplogroup but they both share a, a, a mutation that created this child haplogroup or sub haplogroup. When if one of them only participated and I didn't have two and they had this mutation here, 98226, it would be private. But because they both share it, it created their haplogroup. Now, when we look at this, also you will see here in green, um, there's an app that says average one. What does that mean? That means across all three of us, myself, A, and match D and E, there is an average of one private variant. Now, that private variant, I know because I manage all of these kits uh, in this haplogroup, and I know that I have one private variant. Uh, uh, Match D also has one private variant, but Match E has two private variants. Collectively, if we did the math, divided four uh, private variants by three, we get something that rounds to one, and that's why you see an average of one. Over here, I know that, uh, I believe it's B, has one private variant but C has none. And so the one private variant that B has, um, it is one that I don't want to get too technical, but it is unstable, so they don't include it. And that's why you see this gray here is because there's actually, in, by their calculations, no um, sh uh, private variance between them. Now, when we go here, all of us five are members of this haplogroup IY106972. Now, to understand how these branches were created, I'm going to jump up to the very top of this graphic. And let's assume we have the main branch of my I paternal family tree. At some point, there was a branch that happened through a mutation. And going across the top here, you see all of these letters and numbers. Each one of those represent a branch off of a branch. So you see here, there's L758, that's a branch. Uh, M170 is another branch, and so forth. Until we get down to this one right here, and I'm just going to say the last three numbers here, 087, that is this haplogroup. So when we look at this, all of these matches that you see down below here are subsumed under this blue item. And you could still see that there are some of my matches that are not visible in the, my screen grab here. But this haplogroup is here and everybody is a part of it. And all of these mutations are also part of this haplogroup. Now, when we go down to the next level, this one here ending in 082 is another haplogroup. And it includes everybody that are here and going across here. All of us are members of that haplogroup. When that mutation happened, it was carried down to every single one of us. 
Then right here with the one ending in 091, another mutation happened and it was passed down to everybody here and everybody going that direction. Now, these two here, haplogroups, didn't receive that mutation. So they're over here on their own. But now we go down to this one ending in 317. That includes everybody here. And I am also a member of that. And then finally here, this is where I, or I should say, my haplogroup branches off here and we are our unique one. Here is another unique haplogroup, another unique haplogroup, and so on. And that's another way to kind of look at how they determine these branches. Now, I also want to show you what I think is perhaps an easier way to look at this. And that is the time tree. And the time tree, as I mentioned before, is the better way of kind of viewing this. And you can see here's my haplogroup, the 98226. And I remember that I said the next one up, if I go back here, was 972. Uh, I'm sorry, is right here. I'm sorry, that was mine. I, I circled the wrong one here. That's my haplogroup. But the one going up here is 317. And if you go up here, the next one above um, my 972 is 317. And that's here. And what I like about here and what I typically do is I like to take my the, the information from my matches and my block tree and kind of write them on here so I can easily identify them. And this is what I use to really understand my matches and my branches. But this is, again, another way to kind of visualize how the haplogroups were formed, and where you and your matches fit within it. And the last thing I'd like to show you again is kind of go back and look at um, this in context. So we saw here the different branches and where everybody fits. And this is, again, you can kind of see where, um, how my particular matches here where they fit in and where they fit in with their particular haplogroup and then how all of us are members of this particular haplogroup. And that might help you kind of visualize, okay, how many generations really kind of fit within some of these and, and kind of see how these branches are truly represented within the, the data and the family tree DNA reports. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, module number four, and I hope you'll stick around and watch module number five, which is how do we find people to upgrade to the Big Y700 test and help us and them improve our own results. And then module six is on an experiment of how can we use targeted DNA testing to answer very specific research questions that we have.